and uh, we're, we've been looking at four areas and uh, they are all linked they are linked by Jesus the King probably the first prophecy we had when we met the other evening when when Mike's talking about that prophecy that Ray brought the first prophecy was about the kingdom of God it was about receiving and establishing the kingdom of God and the uh, Jesus as king links everything for the cornerstone you you can only make Jesus central when you make him the king when you take land for yourself and extend your own land when when the church extends they're taking the land for the kingdom of God when, when we use the battle bow we're taking land from the kingdom of Satan when Jesus is king, he, he, he establishes everything. And, and, and this week, we're, we're looking at, from Judah, every ruler. Every ruler. That's part of the kingdom of God. Now, um, just before Christmas, I, I, got, um, I, sh I shared here, we, we, I preached just before Christmas, and talked about genealogies. I, I got into a genealogist because my... Um, uh, my son went to Germany and uh, bumped into a relative of ours, a total coincidence. And I, I've, I've got my family tree from Germany because my, my grandfather was German. So I, I've got my family tree going back to 12 generations in Germany, which is very interesting. But um, wh what, I w what I was sharing was uh, you all have three, three genealogies. I don't know if you realize that. Um, you've got the family tree of your father, you've got your family tree of your mother, and you're a child of God. Amen. You've got a third family tree. Um, well, actually, um, you've got a fourth one, which I want to tell you about, a fourth, um, which, which is linked to really um, being a child of God. But um, if, you could, if you could show it up on the, um, the PowerPoint, uh, it's, it's got the next slide. I wanted to show you this. I'm, I'm very sorry. I am not very adept at PowerPoints. So this is very basic. But, um, um, but it will communicate the point to you is simply this. Um, it says, from Judah. Now, um, Judah had many children. He, well, he had a few children. I didn't say he had many. But he had, he had a few children. But only one was chosen for the royal line. Only one. That was Perez. Perez had many children, but he had another child called Hezron, who was in the royal line. And that continued. There is a royal line from Judah, which went eventually to David. David had many children, but only Solomon followed the royal line. And this went right through Though, though there were many children, there was only one that, that went into the family line until Christ. Until Christ came. When Christ came, he had many seeds. Many seeds. Many children. You are the seeds of Christ. Do you, under, do you understand that? If you're born again, you are the seeds of Christ. And every one of you is a ruler. I, 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 I need an amen there. Amen. Every one of you is a ruler. Amen. From Judah, every ruler. You see, Christ changes everything. It's not just for one son to be made part of the royal line. When Christ came, he transformed it. He made us all rulers. You are all People that can establish the kingdom of God. I, I find that absolutely, utterly amazing. You are all rulers in king. I love this subject. It's my favorite subject, the kingdom of God. Now, um, when I was in the student weekend, I, I, it's, it's not just that you're made rulers. Um, when I was in the student weekend, I was, I was, I was teaching them about a biblical adoption. And, and, and biblical adoption is different to the way we understand adoption. The way we understand adoption is lovely. It's a lovely thing. But it's when you take someone who isn't your natural descent. It's not a natural part. 
and you make them part of your family, that is adoption. But when Paul talks about adoption, that's not what he's talking about. He is talking about something even more precious. He's talking about the Greek father who, when he had a child, he would hand him over to trustees or guardians. And at a certain age, he would adopt his own son and make him an heir. The, the issue is that the word for adoption in the Greek is placing as a son. It's all about sonship. And that includes the women, the girls here and everything. We are all sons and heirs. Do you understand? So we are, natural, we are naturally descendant from Christ because we are born of the Holy Spirit. When Jesus calls us brothers, the word brother means same parent. Same parent. So um, I want to read to you. This is Galatians 4. This, this, is, what, um, this is what Paul was talking about. Um, in, in, in listen to this. This is, this is how Paul saw it. Galatians 4 verse 1. What I am saying is that as long as the heir is a child, he is no different from a slave, although he owns the whole estate. He is subject to guardians and trustees until the time set by his father. So also, when we were children, we were in slavery, under the basic principles of the world. But when the time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive the full rights of sons. Hallelujah. Because you are sons, God the Spirit, sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And since you are a son, God has also made you an heir. Are, are you with you? You are not just sons. You are heirs. That means this. He's not just included you in the royal line. He's given you the authority to rule. Do you understand? It's not just rule. He's given you the authority to rule. If, if, um, if, a, if a football manager went to another club, I'm sorry about these football analogies, but if a football manager went to another club and said, oh, I'll tell you what to do, you say, you can't do that. You're, you're not part of this club. Do you understand? You need an authority to rule. But God has given you authority. Christ says, I have all authority, and I give you the kingdom. Are you with me? You have the right to rule. Now, when I looked, at, um, I, I looked at the Hebrew word for ruler, I've got to say, I was disappointed. I was disappointed. I was hoping to see something else. And uh, um, I'll, I'll give you the word. Um, the, the word is norgash. The Hebrew word for rulers is norgash. And... Uh, the, the meaning I was disappointed with because it means, um, uh, it, it means an oppressor. Uh, you know the slave drivers that were in Israel when Israel was slaves? The slave drivers over them, the taskmasters, they were called Norgash. I thought, God, I, I, I thought you, you were going to bring rule into our lives that was good. But this is an, an aggressive Harsh rule. And, uh, I, and I was disappointed. And then God said to me, this is what God said to me. And it was a revelation to me. He said, look, um, I, am, I am not, this isn't about reigning over people. This, this, isn't, this is different to reigning in God's house. This is ruling over your enemy. I am giving you rule, harsh rule over your enemy. Do you understand? And then he's suddenly realized he has given me the rule over Satan and demons. He's given me the rule over sickness and strongholds. He's given me the rule over anything that opposes God. Hallelujah. I suddenly, suddenly I, I said to God, but, but Satan in the past has oppressed me. He says, yes, I've turned the tables. You're oppressing the oppressor. Do you understand? 
You are the one that rule over the person that used to rule you. It's glorious, isn't it? This, listen, listen, this is an aggressive rule. When Jesus cast out demons, he said, If by the Spirit of God I cast out demons, the kingdom of God is here. He's given that to us. He has given that to us. The authority. He has turned the tables totally round. This isn't a gentle rule. In, 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 in Matthew 11, I, I, I shared this last week. It says this. Since the time of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God has come violently. And violent men have taken it by force. That's violent men and women, by the way. We are all called to rule. And we are called to rule over the enemy strongly. Strongly. Jesus, do you know, even Jesus, when he rebuked, you know when he was in the storm and he rebuked the waves, the same word is used to rebuke demons. Jesus exercised his rule over all creation. That's what he's given to us. He's given us the same rule. Jesus ruled over death. He ruled over nature. He cursed fig trees. Raymond Thomas cursed a tree outside his house once. <laughs> Listen, we are given rule. The same rule as Christ. From Judah, every rule. This is magnificent, isn't it? You are allowed to get excited. You say this. Let, let, let me tell you this. And, um, and you say, are you sure, Mick? Listen, Zechariah, I'm going to read you Zechariah 10, verse 4. And then the next verse. From Judah will come the cornerstone. From him the tent peg. From him the battle bow. From him every ruler. Listen to the next verse. Together they will be like mighty men, trampling the muddy streets in battle. Because the Lord is with them, they will fight and overthrow the horsemen. I, I presume that's the cavalry. That's the cabal. You, are, you have the authority to overcome all the power of the enemy and nothing will harm you. I hope you're seeing this. This, this is the kingdom of God we're in. I talk. I used to teach um, the kingdom of God at Covenant College. And um, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was trying to teach this to the students. And, and one, one girl um, just burst into tears at the end of the lectures. She just burst into tears. And, uh, and, and the principal of the guy said, well, why are you crying? And she said, it's too big. The kingdom of God is too big. I can't cope with it. I thought, hallelujah, I don't mind people crying over that. The kingdom of God that God's given you is big. I, 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 we've, we've got to get it into our heads. We are not subjects or slaves. We are rulers over all the power of the enemy. Now, um, you, you might say to yourself, well, I, I don't feel like a ruler. I, I, I don't feel that if a demon could turn up, that I could deal with a demon. I, 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 I feel uh, inadequate. Um, Gareth, who came up just earlier, um, the, the last time he was given a notice, talked uh, about the word fine. That um, when, when you ask a Christian how they are, they go, fine, I'm fine. I have a definition for fine. It's feeling inadequate, neurotic, and exhausted. That's fine. So if anybody says to you they're fine, you know where they are at. Now, many, many of us feel inadequate, neurotic, and exhausted. And you say, how can I be a ruler? That's, listen, if you feel like that, that's your qualification. Do you understand? That's your qualification for ruling. Because Jesus said, I have chosen the weak of this world to make them strong. 
to confound the wise. Joel 3 verse 10 says, let the weakling say, I am strong. Oh, we're going to do that now. Say, I am strong. I am strong. That's, that's what the word of God says. Let the weakling say, I'm not just saying, uh, yes, I am. You are all weak. You are all weaklings. Because without Christ, you cannot take on the enemy. But with Christ, you can. The weak can. Let me say this. Every weak person is a ruler. Oh, hallelujah. He gives strength to the weak. Do you know, let me read you this. This is 2 Corinthians. Let me read you this. 2 Corinthians 12. This is Paul, friends. This is Paul. No, it's, I mean 1 Corinthians, sorry. 2 Corinthians 12, verse 10. It says this. Therefore, this is Paul. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Now, um, there, there was... There was a word that during that time when we were um, we were meeting upstairs, uh, uh, one of the guys had a prophecy about the IKEA tables we have up there. Uh, it was very interesting because um, the he he noticed if you if you notice these little IKEA tables, you have to screw them in at the bottom, and and uh, most of them there were wonky. They had wonky legs. And he said, God is going to use people with wonky legs. <laughs> now, uh, listen, we, I, I've got wonky legs. Not literally, I hope, but I, I, we've got wonky legs, haven't we? We're weak sometimes. Uh, listen, it doesn't matter if you've got wonky legs, because he makes you strong. Listen, listen I... I, I love this because I found this scripture. Isaiah 35 says, Strengthen the feeble hands. Steady the knees that give way. Say to those with fearful hearts, Be strong. Do not fear. Your God will come and he will come with vengeance. Hallelujah. Listen. God is raising up an army of warriors here. Do you understand? That's what the kingdom of God is all about. That there is no, there is no substitutes. We are all in it together. From Judah, every ruler. Now, you, you might say, "What? Well, how? How do I start this? How? How do I start to implement this?" Okay. Um, and uh, last week, I, I was hoping to use um, uh, Jean-Pierre, um, but uh, I, I gave the illustration of working out and with weights. And, and I want to re-illustrate re this to you. That if you go into a gym, you, you can't do the heaviest weights first. That is bonkers. You do your back in or you do yourself some damage. So you have to start with lighter weights and build up. Do you understand? Now, um, the, the prophet, I, I think it was Jeremiah, said this. He said, look, he said, he said this, that if, if you can't race with men, don't race with horses. Do you understand? If you can't, if you can't run with men, don't take on the horses. Start with men first. Do you understand? And uh, uh, I, I, I know that the, the, the large number of you here would love to rule. Is that right? Wouldn't, wouldn't you love 
to just speak to sickness and see it move. Listen, that Jesus ruled everywhere. Jesus ruled everywhere, ruled over sickness. He, he didn't have a battle with sickness. He just spoke to sickness and it went. He didn't pray to God. Jesus never, you, you find me a scripture where Jesus prayed to God, his father, and healed somebody. He just healed them. He used his authority. Do you see? Now, listen, you are destined to overcome and rule demons. They will obey you. But learn to, learn to, with, with, learn to rule differently before you take on demons. Is that's what I'm saying. Do you understand? And, and the, way, the way you learn to rule in greater things is very simple. It's rule yourself. It's rule yourself. If you can rule yourself, then you start to be able to rule as God wants you. Do you understand? So you start to rule yourself. In fact, there's a proverb which says, greater, greater is a man that can rule his spirit than one who takes a city. It's, it's important to rule here first. Do you understand? When Joseph... Joseph had a vision when he was a young man. He had a vision, which I believe was a vision of the kingdom of God. It was, it was the sun, moon, and stars were bowing down to him. And the sheaves of corn, corn were bowing down to him. He had a vision of the kingdom that he would rule. And, and you'd think, well, I, if, if that had been me and I'd had a vision like that, wow, what's going to happen next? I'll tell you what happened next to Joseph. He ended up as a slave. The total opposite of what God had said to him. He could have said, he could have said, well, good rinse to that word. I was told I was going to roll, and now I'm a slave. And, and God, I am quite sure God must have said to him this. Ah, you are called to rule, but first rule yourself. So he ruled over over his, he roared over the thoughts and emotions he must have felt being, being betrayed by his brother. He was accused, unjustly accused of rape, and he, and he ended up in a prison. And he roared in the prison. Wherever he roared, wherever he went, he roared, Joseph, until God's word was ready. And then he brought him out, and he roared the world. Are you with me? Because he ruled himself. I, even, this, even this weekend, God, God has said to me, um, let me read you this scripture firstly. Um, uh, this, this, is, this is 1 Corinthians 9, and I want to... Um, the, do you know, you rule yourself aggressively. Uh, uh, th this harsh rule is, is not a striving. This is, what, this is what Paul said. Do you not know... That in a race, all the runners run, but only one gets the prize. Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last. But we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore... I do not run like a man running aimlessly. I do not fight like a man beating the air. No, I beat my body and make, my, make it my slave so that after I preach to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. Listen, he, he's not talking about striving or, or um, wearing hair shirts or, you know, like the monks used to do. He's not talking about that. He's saying, I rule my body. I rule my emotions, I rule my thinking, I rule my desires. They, listen, they are beautiful things, but they're your servants. They're not your rulers. Let me tell you this, I know this because I have been ruled by emotions. I know when I've been hurt or upset, it's affected me and changed the way I act and speak. That shouldn't be. We are to rule our emotions. Even, even this past weekend, I got hurt. It's, I'm, I'm quite a sensitive man. <laughs> I get hurt very easy. I got hurt this past weekend. And I started going, 
And God, God said to me, what, what are you doing? I'm really, he said, what are you doing? I'm saying, I'm hurt. Man, rise up. Emotions are your servant. They're not to tell you what to do. Are you with me? I, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, raw, start, some of you, start to rule your emotions. Join with me. This is the way, the pathway to ruling sickness and demons. It's the pathway. Rule your thinking. A few weeks ago, God, I, I'm, I'm going to repeat this because it needs to be repeated. Um, I, I, um, God taught me about street pastors. I, I used to do street pastors. And uh, uh, I, I, I learned a lot about um, uh, bouncers. They call them, um, they call them door staff now. Um, but I, I knew them as bouncers. They would stand outside the nightclubs and decide who came in and who didn't. Do you understand? They, that's what they did. And God said to me, Mick, you're the bouncer of your mind. You're the doorman of your mind. You determine what comes in, and you determine what doesn't come in. You roll your mind. Christians, roll your thinking. Roll your desires. I, I, I say this not to just young people. There, there, there have been disasters in God's kingdom and God's church because people never ruled their sexual desires. God, listen, God has equipped us to rule. They're beautiful gifts, but they are our servant, not our ruler. Do you understand? Listen, folks, that is how you start to take the kingdom of God. You make Jesus the king of your body. And that includes everything. You're eating, you're drinking. You rule your body because it's the pathway to rule in in the kingdom of God from Judah every ruler 